Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Cassie and I talk about books and review books on my channel. And today I'm going to go over some of my absolute favorite authors. These are the authors that uh, when they write a book or they put a book out, I'm nine times out of ten going to purchase it. I won't say like I always read it like right when it's bought. I don't push things aside on my TBR just to read them, uh, but I'm definitely going to pick it up and try and read everything written by the author. There's 15 on there and there's there's a wide variety of genres uh, that they write in. And I will say that uh, these are not really in any specific order. Um, if you wanted me to say like which one was my absolute favorite out of all of them, I would probably struggle to be able to come up with or which one was my favorite. In no particular order, one of my favorite authors as far as fantasy goes, actually I have several in the fantasy category. Uh, so first would be uh, Brandon Sanderson. Uh, he wrote The Mistborn Saga, The Stormlight Archives, The Skyward series, The Reckoner series. He's the one that just keeps writing and writing and writing and never seems to stop and always has at least one or two books coming out every year. As far, and as well as several of the novellas that come out every year. So he's definitely one of my favorite storytellers, my favorite fantasy authors. When he comes out with a new book, like I think this year the fourth Era 2 Mistborn is coming out, I'm definitely going to get that. I've read the first three in that. Uh, I have not read everything by Brandon Sanderson yet, and it's definitely a goal to try and get through all of his books at some point. Right, so next in the fantasy genre, I'm going to say uh, Robert Jordan who wrote The Wheel of Time, which Brandon Sanderson also finished The Wheel of Time, which is kind of how I heard about him in the first place. Uh, but the, the Wheel of Time has been a, it's been a journey for me because uh, I started reading them way back in high school and reading them as they came out and they were published. You know, there, I have a whole video on my journey with The Wheel of Time. Uh, so this, uh, Robert Jordan, uh, I have not read anything else by him, but I invested so much time into his this series, yeah, he became one of like my favorite, most beloved authors in the fantasy genre. Next in the fantasy genre is Tad Williams. Uh, he wrote the Memory Star and Thorn, as well as the Shadow March, and now like the he has a continuation of Memory Star and Thorn, like what happens after. He has some of the most amazing prose that I've that I've ever read. It just kind of sucks you in and paints a beautiful picture of like what's going on. He also writes urban fantasy and he also writes science fiction and I have read the, the Other Land series which was his science fiction uh, which if you liked Ready Player One you should definitely pick that up even though it's much longer. Uh, Tad Williams has a reputation for starting a series that he claims is going to be a trilogy and then turning it into four books because he can't finish it in three. So, and that's happened with almost every series of his so far. And except the urban fantasy one, which I haven't read that yet, but I do have the first book in that series. And then the next two in the in the fantasy genre are more like middle grade, uh, but I do love me some middle grade. Uh, so we have uh, Orbert Sky, who wrote the Love and Thumps series. Uh, you're a fan of little grade fantasy like uh, Harry Potter and stuff like that. Uh, Love and Thumps uh, was hilarious and he also wrote the Wizard for Hire series uh, which I also really really liked. Orange Sky, really fun author. Uh, and the second one in the kind of middle grade fantasy is uh, Brandon Mull and he wrote Fable Haven. He also wrote The Beyonders um, and The Five Kingdoms but I haven't read The Five Kingdoms yet and Beyonders read the first two and I think it there's four books in it but anyway like, I have enjoyed all of his books so far they are a lot of fun to read again if you like middle grade fantasy or you like to read with your kids these are great ones to pick up all right so those are the fantasy authors that I really like the ones that I'll definitely pick up their future works now I'll get into my classics so at this point I, I have read several classics but here's my favorite authors as far as classics go and I have to say, uh, first we'll have, we'll have uh, Victor Hugo, and I have only, this is the only book that I've read by him, but I, I absolutely loved it. I adored 
everything about it. I didn't even mind that there was so much about the French Revolution. It's a great story. I can see why it's so beloved. So Victor Hugo, I plan to pick up more by him, but this book was so amazing it just blew me away. Next in classics, uh, authors, I have Edgar Allan Poe. I love Edgar, I love Edgar Allan Poe. I love his work. It's dark, it's dreary, and every time I read something by him, it's like I feel like drawn into whatever he has, whatever world or whatever situation that he has created. Yes, he's really dark. His works have inspired so many things. So Edgar Allan Poe, the, I won't say, he wasn't obviously the original horror writer, but definitely loved his stuff. And the last one in for classics um, is William Shakespeare. Yes, I have the complete works of William Shakespeare, and I have read several of his works and his plays, and I'm still so amazed at like his creativity and the stories and stuff that he created. Um, I know that there's a lot of debate whether or not he actually wrote all of his plays, and people can continue to debate. I'm still going to love William Shakespeare. So those are kind of my classic authors that I really like, and I really don't have to worry about them putting out more stuff. Um, but I certainly there's I haven't read everything by them, so there's more, always more to read. Okay, and then uh, for science fiction, I really only have one, and that would be Michael Crichton. Um, I have always enjoyed his stories and getting into the worlds that he creates. First book I read for it by him was Jurassic Park, and I read it when I was like 13. And ever since then, I have loved his work and have continued to read it. I have not read everything by him but it's something I'm working toward. The next one I think would be like contemporary and some and historical fiction. So for historical fiction, yeah, Sumant Kidd is probably my favorite author for historical fiction. I think she writes contemporary too. I have not read her nonfiction novels, but I have read um, her three historical fictions. I have to say like, The Book of Longings wasn't my favorite one, but I did like The Secret Life of Bees and I did like the the Invention of Wings. Those were probably my two favorites by her. But I love how she writes and I love the way she puts a, a spin on things. Yeah, it, anytime she comes out with something new, I'm, I'm going to pick it up and read it. I have not read anything by her daughter, but I've heard that her daughter also writes really great things. All right, and then uh, in first, as far as contemporary fiction goes, I have, that has to go to Frederick Bachman. Fed, Frederick Bachman uh, makes me laugh. He makes me cry. He has these wonderful great characters that I get so invested in and that I just love them. I love the stories that he writes. My biggest struggle book that I struggled with him was Beartown. That was because the first part of it was so much about hockey and then it absolutely completely changed and then it became really, really amazing. Uh, so that's uh, Frederick Bachman. Love his stuff. I will always pick up his stuff and read his stuff. I still have one of his books I need to read. Uh, so those are the kind of the contemporary, I guess, or the, the fiction writers that are my favorites. And now I'm going to get into some of the nonfiction. you got to grab onto them. First one isn't in my field, obviously. This is astrophysics. This is Stephen Hawking. Uh, Stephen Hawking, if you don't know who Stephen Hawking is, he is an astrophysicist, or he was. He, he passed on a couple of years ago. Uh, but he wrote The Brief History of Time, Universe in a Nutshell. He studied black holes. And he was also had Lou Gehrig's disease and was very disabled uh, and continued to work even though uh, eventually he ended up in a wheelchair. He was unable to talk and he had that little uh, computer that would speak for him. Definitely one of my all-time favorite authors. Uh, one of the most amazing figures in our world. And I haven't read everything by him, but I, um, I think he has some other books that came out after Brief History of Time and Universe in a Nutshell. Uh, that I would like to pick up. The movie about him is also really good. The, uh, the Theory of Everything. It was a really that was a really good show. Uh, so the last four, uh, these are writers in the field that I work, and these are got to be my top four people that absolutely love their work, and I aspire to be like them. Uh, so first would be Bessel van der Kolt. And I don't have their books with me. Uh, they're they're actually at my other house, so I'm not going to go get them. Uh, Besser van der Kolt wrote *The Body Keeps the Score*, and Besser van der Kolt is a the one of the leaders in trauma treatment and how to work with PTSD and complex PTSD. He's amazing, 
and every time I read his books I of course hear his German accent in them. And I would say as far as writers who, in my field who write to where a lay person could understand, I would say that his, I mean it is, it is technical, you, there are a lot of psycho jargon in there, but I think his is one of the more accessible ones. Uh, the next one, author in my field that is one of my superstars, would be Peter Levine, and he wrote um, In and, and Restores Good. Peter Levine, I've seen some of the work that he's done, and I've done some of his trainings, and like, wow, like it blows me away. And again, he is one of those that is focused on trauma and treating trauma and building, taking people who have been through some of like the worst things that we could possibly imagine and building them up and making their lives better. So I, I absolutely love his stuff. It's amazing. The next uh, person is like one of my favorite authors. Uh, what is Gabor Mate? And he is a doctor. He wrote in the realm of hungry ghosts, close encounters with addiction. And he, his specialty is addiction. He works in a hospital. He's a doctor. He has this amazing compassion for his clients and for the people that he serves. And obviously, working with addiction, I absolutely see where he's coming from and some of his frustrations are some of my own as far as like addiction and stuff goes like his books are always they're so full of compassion they're not so much like cut and dried like you have to do this and because a lot of times with addiction stuff we get fixed in we have to do things a certain way and he kind of says well no we have to treat the person as an individual and have compassion for that person and then you know that's that's where uh, we're going to make the most impact and the most change. Love his stuff. Uh, love his trainings. Uh, absolutely amazing person. <laughs> um, one of the most, again, up there with the superstars in my field. And then the last one, and I think she's a little bit more popular. She's gained a lot of popularity because of the work that she does. And that is Esther Perel. And she wrote... Uh, the State of Affairs, Rethinking Infidelity, and she writes about infidelity, obviously, uh, when people cheat and all of that kind of stuff, and she takes it kind of further than other authors do, uh, so she so she starts her conversation where most conversations end, uh, where, you know, after all of, when you're working with someone, when there's been some infidelity and that kind of stuff, like, yeah, you have to take care of like the hurt and the pain and everything that's going on uh, but she really looks at like what is the broader picture like you know we all talk about how we don't um, how heartbroken and how devastating it is when these things happen but she wants to know like why are we doing that like why does it happen so often and uh, and she's not really judgmental on on either side as far as if it's uh, a male having an affair or the female having an affair or you know whatever kind of relationship those people have she kind of approaches it from there's a reason that this this continues to go on and what is that reason a lot of like the pressures and stuff that are placed on relationships and she really explores how the way that men connect in relationships is often ignored so i absolutely love her work so those are my top 16 authors. I know I said 15, but I threw another one in there. So thank you guys all for watching. Uh, if you are interested in any of these authors, uh, I absolutely recommend you pick them up. They, when they write something new, I'm definitely going to pick it up. And the best thing about being somebody that reads a lot is like my favorite author pile is always growing. I'm always uh, interested in finding new authors and people that I absolutely want to read all of their work from. And I continue to do that. I continue to find new authors and new books that I love. Uh, so thank you guys all for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!